Be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful is one of the most famous quotes by Warren Buffett, which would in current situation mean that we should probably start buying. But are insiders, retail investors and members of the government fearful enough? The stock market has been rocked by high inflation and rising interest rates this year. The broad-based S&P 500 and the tech-heavy Nasdaq have fallen for three consecutive quarters, making their longest losing streak since the tail end of Great Recession in 2009. Both indexes have dropped into a bear market with the S&P 500 currently 24% of its highs and the Nasdaq down 34%. So just from a logical standpoint, people are more likely to be fearful than greedy. But how fearful are they? Well firstly we can take a look at the Fear and Greed Index, which is based on 7 different indicators, with a score from 0 0 to 100 in an equal weighing, where 0 is signaling maximum fear and a 100 maximum greed. And right now the index has a score of 19, which is labeled as extreme fear. But before we start mindlessly buying just because of something someone said, let's check out if buying when the index is low is actually profitable. Let's say we hypothetically started buying in extreme fear levels and sell at a peak, but of course in real time we could couldn't perfectly time the peak, so let's say we start selling once we've hit greed levels and 3 days after we haven't hit a new high. So we would firstly buy on October the 12th of 2021 and sell on November the 12th of 2021, which would result in a 7% gain. Then we would start buying on November the 30th and sell on January the 6th. This would result in a 2.8% gain. And if we repeat this strategy for the rest of the year, we would be in profit and every single time and altogether we would be up by around 12% which is an extremely good sign to start buying but past results don't guarantee future performance besides this is a yearly chart so we have limited data and as i've said right now the index has a score of 19 which is already in the extreme fear levels but that doesn't mean this is the bottom for example on the 26th of april the index dropped to a score of 18 and then two weeks later dropped to a yearly low of just 3. In the same time frame the market dropped by another 6% and even when the fear index fell to a yearly low, the market fell even lower. So judging by this past year's data, buying when we've hit extreme fear level and selling in extreme greed is profitable. But we have to remember that just because we've hit extreme fear, it doesn't necessarily mean that the market won't fall further. Now let's take a look at another way to measure fear. Extreme fear implies that people are afraid and are in the majority selling. So we can take a look at retail investor capitulation. And we all know that a typical retail investor buys high and sells low. So if we are selling, we could be at a bottom. Well, according to Goldman Sachs, retail investors were rotating cash from equities into cash last Friday. Last week, retail added $89 billion worth of money market inflows. In addition to selling single stocks, Apple and Tesla, this was the largest inflow into cash since April the 8th of 2020. And according to Goldman flow trader Scott Rubner, after opening up their Q3 quarterly statements over the weekend, retail has finally blinked. Capitulation is near. And with the CPI coming up on October the 13th, this capitulation could happen very soon, obviously making it more likely if the CPI report comes in hotter than expected. That being said, if the report is somehow below expectations, we should see a market rally. Now let's check out what our insiders, members of the Senate and the House of Representatives doing. Because if anyone knows what is going to happen in the future, it's probably them. And let's start with insiders. The biggest buy was made by Miao Matthew, the director of SNX, but for some reason he sold the same amount of shares on the same day, so we're not going to count him in. The next biggest purchase was made by Franklin Resources, a holding company that bought around $37 million worth of its own stock. Insiders also bought around $10 million 
years worth of CNTQ. And some of the more known stocks on the list are Coinbase and Rocket Companies. They bought around 390k worth of Coinbase and around a million dollars worth of RKT. So there are some insiders that are buying the dip on their own stocks. But if we check the latest insider trading, we can see that most of them are selling, which is a sign that there could be more pain to go. Looking at the Senate, we can see that the latest trades were sales made by Thomas R. Carper, who in the past 6 years outperformed the stock market by 45%, and the majority of the trades in the past 2 months were sales, so it looks like the Senate is also not buying the dip. But what about the House of Representatives? Well, that is an entirely different story. In the past month, almost every trade was a buy, with the latest ones made by Kevin Hearn, but in contrast to a recently mentioned member of the Senate, he underperformed the stock market. Among the recently made purchases, there is only one member of the house that has outperformed the stock market by a lot, Alan S. Lowenthal, and he bought Service Corporation International with a stock ticker of SCI and Salesforce with a stock ticker of CRM. So in general, the house seems to be a lot more bullish, but most of them haven't even outperformed the stock market. So they really aren't the best investors to copy. And I think that all these examples paint a clear picture that most of people, including retail investors, insiders and even members of the government are fearful of the current stock market. Whether you want to listen to Warren Buffett and be greedy when others are fearful is up to you. But just remember that just because people are fearful, it doesn't mean we've hit the bottom. I for example am slowly adding to my positions as they drop in value. And if you want to see which stocks exactly I recently bought, click on the video that just popped up. And if you haven't already subscribed, smash that subscribe button as you'll help me out a lot in reaching my goal of 300 subscribers by the end of this month. If you have any questions or recommendations, leave them in the comments down below and thanks for watching.